Good evening and welcome to HUR at Home Inspiration. I'm Jackie Gales Webb, and we have been having some excellent conversations on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. I really want to thank you for joining us tonight. I know we're going to have an extremely important and inspiring conversation about how faith motivates and inspires and supports and directs us through our lives. Tonight, uh, we have a couple of really, really talented gentlemen. I want to first send love and condolences to my colleague at WHUR, Stretch Garrett, Shirley Glenn Gibson, his grandmother, a member of First Baptist in D.C. Uh, on Randolph Street, made her transition, and she meant an awful lot to Stretch and his family, meant the world to them, and our prayers are with you, Stretch and your family. God bless you. My prayers are also with our friends on the Gulf Coast in the path of Hurricanes Laura and Marco and the people in Northern California who have lost their homes due to wildfires. We have you in our prayers. And my prayers are for all of us in the advent of next week's uh, political convention, Four Nights, uh, the GOP convention will kick off tomorrow. Four nights of speakers will include the president's most vocal supporters, such as the couple who pointed guns at the Black Lives Matter protesters outside their St. Louis mansion in late June. One of our guests is from St. Louis. Let's bring on Pastor Michael Lampkin from St. Louis. Uh, he is uh, the pastor of Fresh Anointing Prosperity Ministry. Welcome, Pastor. Hello, hello. How are you doing, Miss Webb? Listen, thank you for the opportunity to come and share. I appreciate it. Really appreciate God it. God bless you. And we're going to also bring on Steve. Uh, yeah, Stephen Hurd. <laughs> Stephen Hurd is a friend of mine of many years because he is the minister of music at First Baptist of Glen Arden, but he is also a very talented gospel artist. And I, I believe you and Pastor Lamp can know each other, Stephen. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, um, Pastor Lampkin, what's going on in St. Louis? You know, we're hearing, oh. in, in, you know, we're hearing about people shooting people from their front porches and everything. And what's the situation? Oh, it's it's a lot going on. Um, it's it's been some uh, sporadic, um, yet more 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 uh, more presently, uh, people just randomly getting shot on highways. It's just it's a lot of things going on. Um, uh, they have recently reopened the uh, Michael Brown case only to find no f other supporting evidence to convict the police. So that opened up a whole nother can of worms. People have been rioting and just a lot of stuff going on. So, but, but we're praying, we're, we're, we're believing God for outcome. Uh, even in these bad times, something beautiful can come out of the ashes. And so um, just hold up those of you all that are tuned in, just hold up St. Louis. Uh, we're, we're here. We're praying. We're believing God. As I say at our church all the time, we believe God for all positive, powerful outcomes in every single situation. Uh, so there's a lot going on here, but there's a lot of great things. Things going, you know, uh, even in the in the in the in a bad situation, there there have been some uh, very um, prominent things happening. We, you know, we just had a voting, uh, so there was some beautiful uh, African American women who have uh, taken up the ranks, and they're doing some great. They're going to do some great things in the city of St. Louis uh, in their ward, and so it's going to be it's going to be a great time. So it's, oh, it's, it's, it's going to be an upside to it, no matter what, you know. <laughs> Tell us about your church and are you having services in person now or are you streaming online? Tell us about your church. Okay. Fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Uh Fresh, Fresh Money Church, St. Louis, Missouri. My father started this church in 1995. I took it over when I was like 22, 23, something like that. So, um, yeah. Oh man, like Lord, what's going on? Uh, we have, we have, we have abided by the rules and regulations of uh, our city. Uh, you know, no more gatherings of like 10 or less. So we try to stay in that, um, in that, in that, in that, uh, in that. Uh, should I say? that number so that we can, you know, make sure everybody's safe. So nobody to this day, no coronavirus in the fresh. So God is good. So when you abide by the rules, things can happen. So uh, we thank God for that. So, but yeah, I, um, uh, considering, uh, considering opening, but just for those who may want to come and just have a, uh, impartation in, in house, but again, that, that, 
probably just be for the fresh, but right now it's just been the same few and we just really uh, appeal it to our online audience. I just want everybody to be safe, you know, so not saying that we don't believe God. We got, we, we definitely have faith over fear, but uh, we want to make sure that we're taking the necessary precautions and making sure that everybody is safe and sound and those who have pre-existing conditions can, you know, uh, mm-hmm. be safe and we'll see y'all online because, you know, and uh, uh, Stephen, uh, uh, First Baptist of Glen Arden was really prepared to go online. Uh, and, and as minister of music, you had to really jump into a whole lot of Zoom uh, production. Uh, how was that? Um, yeah, we did do a lot of Zoom stuff, but but, but it you know it kept changing so fast. Like uh, one day we would get information from the from the governor, and before we would, could leave the meeting to get to implement what we had planned the rules had changed and the whole expectations and the demographics of what we were allowed to do had changed. But I have a dream team, um, Jackie, uh, on my staff between um, Anthony Brown and Mike McCoy, uh, Anthony Miller, um, and, and man, they, they, they work so incredibly well together with actually doing um, music prep for studio stuff that they were in their element and they just made it all make sense they made it all work together so we really didn't get a chance to miss a beat thank the lord and um, i'm excited because we're still able to help people to experience god um probably in the last two or three months we've been able to actually come into the ser- to the sanctuary to record for communion i am tonight i'm actually at the church um uh, to record a communion service um, but we've been doing, like most pastors uh, uh, in churches around the country, even the world, have been doing virtually. Wow. Uh, Pastor Lampkin, I don't know about St. Louis, but in the DMV, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia, we have several churches like First Baptist of Glen Arden, where there are several gospel artists, recording artists in one church, you know, First Baptist has has Stephen Hurd and Anthony Brown. What is that like, Stephen, to have Anthony there at the church and the other talented people that you work with? Um, we like I tell you, we God has really blessed us, and and it didn't happen. We didn't plan it that way. Um, when Anthony came on board, Anthony Brown um, had worked with some previous artists, but he wasn't Anthony Brown yet, um, and when he first introduced a song that he had written and he told me he was going to record it, I told Pastor Jenkins, I said, this is going to be big and we need to figure out how to handle this. This is going to be bigger than anything I've ever done. And we need, and and the Lord showed it to me. It was going to be, the Lord was going to give him permission to impact the world. And he's done that. Um, And then most recently in the last two and a half years, we hired a young man named Will McMillan, um, who is a, a new artist on the scene, who is a phenomenal a keyboard musician, um, songwriter, and of course, Mike McCoy, Washington's own um, with, the, with the Voices United. And so it's just, it, it's, it's just this, this, uh, this grace that God has given us um, and working with Pastor Jenkins, who by the way says to tell you hello. Um, um, it, it, he's, the, he's a gracious man that gives us permission to function in the areas of our gifting and not hoard them or just hold them back for just for our house. And so it makes ministry, it makes ministry a joy. Yeah. Now, Pastor Lampkin, what is ministry like at your church? Is it just you or you have a team? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not just me. I um I have uh Jesse Williams, Reverend Jesse Williams. Uh, actually a lot of people know Amber. Yeah, yeah. Jesse goes, Jesse is a member of the Fresh. Are you serious? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Listen to me. Jesse Williams <laughs> is a dynamite pack. Absolutely, absolutely. He's Great writer. In four states. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, Amber, before she moved to Atlanta, but she's still a member. So Amber Bullock, she's a member of the Fresh. So to have all them in one spot, it's like, oh, I'm telling you. So we all get together and just have some fun. So I really wow. miss those times. But but Jesse does. He leads our praise and worship, and uh, he's just written us a welcome song because you know we're streaming. So uh, we were so we just getting a lot of stuff. You know, it, it's a process to everything. So we're getting that done. But he wrote a phenomenal song for the welcome song. You know, uh, his song I uh, I got the victory uh, featured on uh, Ricky Dillard's. Uh, not this uh, last one, but the, the previous one. I what was that ten? I think that was the uh, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, so his song, I've got the victory. So he got that. Um, uh, Kevin Lemons, oh, yes, he will. Da, da, da. So that's Jesse and then Patrick Lundy, their new um uh, single. Uh, I was 
Waymaker. That's yeah, Jesse Williams. Yeah. Yeah. Way, hey, 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 Baker. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. So it is a joy to have him. He is, uh, and I think, I think, uh, I think what I enjoy, and I think, uh, and Stephen heard uh, he had, he had mentioned this. It it's a it's a uh, ministry is better when you have people who are gifted and ability uh, have gifts and abilities and talents, but that mixed with loyalty, submission, mm -hmm. and let's come together and we are on the same team. Like we're mm -hmm. here to do ministry. It's not about who's big and whatever, and whatever field and who's famous is there, maybe famous is there, or who's known for this or that. When we come to church, it's all one goal to lift Jesus up mm -hmm. so that the people can mm -hmm. be encouraged, changed, challenged, uh, convicted to move and evolve into a better person. That's what it's all about. And so I Absolutely. appreciate that. You know, we all have the same goal and that's lifting Jesus up, you know, so he can do the drawing. Yeah. Yes. But the real problem in St. Louis, Miss Jackie, is that everybody can sing like him. <laughs> Everybody, I don't care how wow. big that church is, I don't care how small, everybody in St. Louis sings it is like true. him. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> well, speaking of singing like him, tell us the story about BET's Sunday Best Competition. What oh, led wow. you to compete and what happened when you got there? I know you were a finalist. And okay. then what happened after? Did you do a recording or what happened? Okay, so of course Amber Bullock won season four. So Sunday best go to whatever season um, of the last winter. So it was St. Louis. Um, I, we were actually renovating the fresh, and I, was, I got home late. I'm like, if it's meant for me to go, I wake up on time. I think they was doing like a pre audition thing at like six thirty. I woke up at like nine thirty. I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna make. It. I'm like, maybe it's not for me. I pull up to Friendly Temple. It's a lot of people there. I turn around at least three times. I'm like, nah, I'm gonna go and go back to the church. Finish. I finally walk in there and I I sing the first song, uh, the first audition, Save Your More Than Life to Me. I remember like it was yesterday. They said, all right, these people made it through. They called my name. I'm like, okay, that was a joke. Uh, maybe maybe they're going to send me home. Because I literally went in with a mindset to go home because I just knew they was not going to pick me. You know, Because, you know, sometimes we are our worst critic. Let's just be honest. So I go in second round. I sing and they say, all right, you made it through. I'm like, my oh, God, what's going on here? Then you get in front of uh, Kim Burrell, uh, Yolanda Adams, Donnie McClurkin, and then sing in front of them. And they say, okay, you made it. And then only to, you know, and then it's still up to the executive producers to see if you're going to go and be one of the top 20 finalists for the TV audition on BT. I was talking to a preacher a preacher called me and said, hey, man, did you hear back from Sunday Beth? I said, I have not. Why, why I'm saying that, literally at my kitchen table, I get a call from the lawyer of BT. Say, hey, you've been chosen to be one of the top 20 finals. I said, I, I said, am I being punked? No. You know, I, I said that. I really did. I said, is this a joke? Who's playing on my phone? Like, no, this is Brian Butler, lawyer. So I said, oh, okay, let me get serious there. I'm like, are you serious? Like, listen, pack all your pack all your suits. And <laughs> so you go. And so I'm literally like, okay, God, what is what are you up to? And I think that was more a confirmation for me that God hit his hand on my life. Because sometimes, you know, other people can say it, but sometimes we don't believe that we all that other people may see in us. And so uh, I think that's what it was. So made it through there. Uh, something's coming out real soon. I promise you. No, okay. lie. I know. I know we hear that all the time, but I promise you not many days. hits. I promise you. I <laughs> promise you. My, I, I promise you. I promise you not many days. Hits. So, and it's been a long time come. It's been a long time coming, but when you are a pastor and you're moving into the artist, you know, the artist. And I thank God for Stephen Hurd because I met Stephen Hurd. Finally, we were at Crystal Records live recording in Kansas City. And yeah, we were. I sat next to Stephen Hurd. I was like, you Stephen Hurd. <laughs> and so, no, for real. And I asked, and first of all, I thank you for being kind and, and talking to you know, so it, it means a lot to a, a, a person who's coming up in the ranks and you pay homage and respect to people who have, man, I used to listen to all the, and my answer will be, we lift you high in all the year. Oh man, I'm telling you. Wow. I, I'm right there. So when I wow. saw him, cool. I appreciate Stephen Hurd for speaking life into me and for giving me real, account. we had a real conversation while we were waiting on, while, while we were waiting on him to set up. And I said, how is it to, work at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I mean, those are, those are massive people. How do you do that? And he began to talk about Pastor Jenkins and about how he was not just concerned about their artistry and their talents and their ability. I remember this. He said wow. he got us together and made sure that our credit was right, our retirement was right, so that, because, you know, we play, I'm a musician myself. I play for a church. Well, I, look, we pre-record now, of course. But uh, people are like, you still play? 
Hey, you got the hustle. You know, yeah. hey, right. you can't right. sit around and wait on the phone somebody to call you. You have to have, you can be anointed to have a, to have right. a job. Still have Stir it. up the gift. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> Stir up a <laughs> gift. So whoever's watching, listen, do what you got to do. But that encouraged me to get your business together because anything that can happen, you know, my father always said, have something to fall back on. And I think that is so important. Look at pandemic. It's a, yeah. it's a prime example. Sometimes yeah. you will not be able to travel. You can't, right. you know, maybe yeah. here and there, but you have to yeah. be careful and strategic about where you go, you know? Right. Uh, and so that blessed me for him to even be honored to share. He didn't say, who are you? And I, I, I said, hey, I ain't nobody. I just, I just, I just thank God for you and your music. And he shared that. And so that I was more the better. And so I'm even taking those now to see how our church can become better with, moving into making sure that those who do work with us that we having them taken care of we're looking into making sure that they're everything is taken care of for them outside of the shout and the dance and the singing what is your business looking like can you afford to get you a home can you afford to do something outside of this you know so i i so i took that with me and i was like that's good i said as they say that's that's good groceries right there so i took that yeah. so i really appreciate that steven is a role model he has always been absolutely deep and fair and inspiring to, to everybody yes. that he meets. Uh, he does a wonderful job at First Baptist of Glen Arden. Today I was talking with, and I will be even more. Yes, yes, that is the cut. I love that song. Yes. So let me ask you both, because we, we, wanna, we wanna help people through this conversation, and there might be some ministers of music, or choir directors who are listening today. Um, when you have someone who truly believes that their voice is the greatest thing since sliced bread, and they're coming in and they want to join your choir or they're either in your choir and they're really not up to par, how do you all handle that? In, in you know, under you know, being Christian about it. <laughs> well, I'm very, I'm very honest. And like, I always, I didn't used to do this, but I do this now. I always ask God to give me grace so I can speak to people honestly and not hurt them, but help them. And so I asked them, I always ask them, do you want the real truth or do you want me to be your friend? Mm, mm. And so I asked them, um, you know, people, you know, they audition for the worship team. Um, and they want to do solos and they, in many instances, they are excited because they heard something that they like, but they don't have the ability to, to sustain what they've heard to actually duplicate it or to make it their own. And so I tell them, I said, you need to, you need to stay connected to the choir um, in the background. So when we do vocal uh, exercises, you do those exercises and do them at home because singing is like exercising. If you don't strengthen the muscle, yes, it's sir. flab. Mm -hmm. You can't sustain it. But the more you do it, the more the muscle remembers and it will come to your rescue on command. Mm -hmm. And so I have people who have actually left because I won't give them a solo. Uh, I won't uh, validate them. You know, I get a, I, I may get a call or something for a recommendation for something. And it, if you're not ready and I don't think you're ready, I can't put my name on something that is not a good representation of excellent ministry. Or I get a lot of times I get people who are enamored by the, the, the stage presentation and they want to be seen and their agenda really isn't ministry. And so I'm always asking God to let me see what I what I can't see here. Let me to see it in my spirit. And when I when I get a sense that there's another agenda, I just, you know, I let them know that at this time we're, what you're offering, we're not looking for. Wow. You know, you, you opened up a whole can of worms there, you know, between ministry and entertainment meaning do you want to be a gospel star or mm, do you mm. spread the the gospel of jesus you know, how, right, right. How you, you know right. looking at today's music industry uh and and how tight it is and how hard it is to become popular uh, particularly now in this financial situation a lot of people are just trying to be stars just to survive i mean you know what do you, what do you think about that the 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 difference between you know going out there with the purpose of spreading the gospel or going out there to make a living <laughs> me Basta? I listen i um uh what can i say i i, I think we <laughs> i'm going to speak for myself 
when it comes time for like, let's say an invitation come through, I, I want to make sure that my focus is not about well, how much, how much the honorarium, because um, I want to make sure that first of all, is, am I, is this an assignment that God wants me to, if, is this a God assignment or is it just another agenda for me to collect? Because I think that means a whole lot. So like if I come into a town and it's like, no, uh, you want to see the city? No, I want to, I want to get somewhere and have a moment with God because I don't want to be, I want, to, I don't want to exhaust my strength viewing the city and then I have nothing to offer to those who have invited me because it, let, let's be honest, it costs. You bring people in, you have to honor whatever's being written, whatever the writer is. And, and, and it's nothing personal. It's just business. So with business, you have to take it serious. Okay. Uh, this cannot be another honorarium gig. It can't be. This has to be a ministry moment. And when you are more focused on the ministry moment, I, I don't think nobody would have problem with the business side that, that is attached to the ministry. And so I think we have to get our focus back. Why am I doing this? What am I doing this for? And because we got to get back to when Paul said, we have this ministry, this ministry, uh, Jesus said, you have not chosen me. I've chosen you. So we had to get yeah. back to the place. Of, we had to get back to the place of he invited us to this. We didn't invite right, ourselves right. to this. God did right. not, you know, it's like, oh, I just didn't wake up one morning and say, oh, I'm a preacher. No, no, no. I didn't want to be. So he invited me to this. So I have to take the invitation seriously. You know, right, right, and, right, and, I, right. and I think that's for everybody, no matter who you are, a minister, a deacon, a preacher, singer, uh, writer, we have to get back to the. And I think it will also help us with peace at ourselves when we realize God called me. So it doesn't matter what nobody else said. God called me for this work and I'm going to stand and be confident in, 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 in the invitation that God has given me. You know? So I think the two words that I use for um, pastor. Mm -hmm. I use entrusted and I use responsibility. Mm, God has good. entrusted us. Yes, He's sir. entrusted us with this assignment. Yes, sir. Whether it's preaching, whether it's praying, whether yes. it's singing, whatever it is, it's an entrustment. And our responsibility yes, sir. is to make him famous, yes, not sir. us. If we make him famous, he'll always take care of us. Yes, he'll sir. always provide for us. Thank he'll you, always Lord. give opportunities for us. Yes, sir. I haven't recorded a record. Uh, in probably 10 years. Uh, uh, it's been that long? I'm wow. Actually, it's been about 10 years. Wow. And I was talking to a young artist about two weeks ago. Okay. And he was like, man, you're still working. How do you do that? When when the Undignified Project had come out, it was my first national project on integrity. I was going all these places and I was traveling. And I kept running into Beverly Crawford in the airport, wow. in different cities, different states. I kept running into Beverly. And she didn't have a project out at the time. Wow. I said, where are you going? Where are you going? She said, I'm going to the Kennedy Center. I'm going to uh, New York to do this. I'm going to this place. And I was like, how did you get all this stuff? And she said something to me that has literally become my mode of operation. Uh -huh. She said, I'm not worrying about charts. I'm not worrying about records. I build relationships. And oh, God puts my good. name in their mouth. And that's I good, get sir. calls from Thank around you. the world. I got a call a few months ago in South Africa, which wow. is like my second home, to just <laughs> do a virtual Sunday morning worship from for church, we never talked money. Um, wow. A couple of years ago, I got a call from Bishop um, Francis in London. He said, "Stephen, I want you to come next Friday." I said, um, "He plane information." I went. I hang, did a, a midnight worship service. I flew back. We never talked about money. Wow. Uh, a day later, that Monday, when I flew back home, my friends were like, "You fly to London and come back on the same the, the day after." I was like, "I still got to serve my church on Sunday morning." I've been to London, so it's, I'm not being a tourist. I'm doing the assignment. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. I flew back and I did my Sunday morning service. And that Monday, his office called about my wire information. And we still hadn't talked about money because of the relationship that yes, had sir. been established. Yes, when we establish relationships, the Bible says no good thing will he withhold from us if we walk sure. upright before him. And like you mentioned yes, before, in John 15, 16, he says, I chose you. I called yeah. you. You didn't yeah. choose you yeah. so that you have fruit that remains yeah. so that you're actually yeah. going to make an impact and Absolutely. not just making a, 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 a withdrawal from, from, from the people. Absolutely. Wow. That's, Absolutely. that's tremendous. That, 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 that is inspiring. Yeah. That's, that's good stuff. Information I want to come out of these conversations. I know uh, Stephen has to go back into service in a little while, so I won't hold you much longer. But let me just find out from both of you, uh, artist, uh, you know, top artist in your mind today, a song or artist that just really touched you, inspired you, a song or artist? Uh, Stephen. My favorite artist in the world, male or female? Doesn't matter. 
<laughs> my favorite art. Okay, so I have categories of favorite artists. Okay, okay. So Marvin Winans is my favorite artist in the world. CC Winans and Whitney Houston are my favorite female artists. And there's a guy when I was a kid named Lorne Harris that I literally listened to all the time wow. because of all, because of his ministry approach and his technique. And I listened to okay three two okay okay all right I'm sorry um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um so th 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 I must I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the chopping block y'all um, yeah. yeah so those are the people I listen to and and. When I want to get a reference of like a, a, a sanctuary moment, I go back to them. Margaret Winans can say anything, and God comes and speaks anything. Yep, yep. It's funny uh, that you you said Marvin Winans because yesterday I told the Alexa to play play the Winans. The song yeah. that came out of Alexa was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so very quickly, because Stephen has to go. Michael, artist, song. What is in what inspires you? Uh, I think uh, I want to say uh, right now, if I if I think on top of my head, I would say uh, I there's a song by Jonathan Dunn. It's called Destiny. That song there ministers to me because again, it just get getting to know your destiny. I mean, you can definitely move and tunnel through ministry a little bit better when you know who you are and who you're assigned to. So yeah, I would say that one right there does it for me. I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to find that one. Michael Dunn, did you say? Uh Jonathan Dunn, sorry. Jonathan, Jonathan Dunn. Dunn. Jonathan I'm Dunn. I'm gonna look that yeah. up. Yeah, Destiny. I'm telling you, that is a great one. I've always loved Vanessa Bell Armstrong. So it listen, everything she does, uh nobody mm -hmm. with Jesus, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, yeah. so yeah. 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 yeah, her crystal rocking. They listen, those yeah. are my they, yeah. they have yeah. it. So yeah. many yeah. I, I love yeah. them. Yeah. Just yeah. how, how they approach the Vanessa song. Bell Armstrong when she says he looked beyond my sings. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. Does it for me too? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, so, okay, yeah. so um, this has been wonderful. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much. I Thank certainly so want to hold up service at First Baptist of Glen Arden. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so we're I'm we're in a pandemic. I can't afford to lose my job. Right, right, right. No, <laughs> listen, no, you cannot. <laughs> so, so Michael, if you could close us out with a prayer, I want to thank you so much, Absolutely. Michael Lampkin, Stephen no Bird, I'm Kathy Gales Webb. This is H U R at Home Inspiration, and Pastor Lampkin is going to give us our closing prayer. Absolutely. Father, I thank you. I love you. I give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Now, God, thank you for those who have tuned in tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the life of Stephen Hurd. Thank you for, for Lady Webb. Thank you for this time of gathering. Now, God, bless us. Continue to keep us safe from hurt, harm, seen, and unseen danger. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Now, God, encourage the hearts of those who have tuned in tonight who may have had answers, questions, and, and concerns. Now, God, I thank you for three things. Victory here, victory now, and victory forever. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody say it, amen. 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 Thank, you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Bless God you. Bless you. Everybody be bless safe. You. Absolutely.